Hello everyone, and welcome back to Daily Cardiology. In today's video, we'll discuss a critical topic, ECG changes at different stages of myocardial infarction. First, let's quickly review what a myocardial infarction or heart attack is. A myocardial infarction occurs when a coronary artery is blocked, usually due to a blood clot forming on a rupture atherosclerotic plaque. This blockage stops blood flow to a part of the heart muscle, depriving it of oxygen. If not treated quickly, the affected heart tissue starts to die, a process called infarction. Fortunately, the heart leaves clues about what's happening, and the ECG is one of the best tools to interpret these clues. Let's dive into the stages and the corresponding changes on the ECG. A typical ECG shows several weights and intervals. The P wave represents atrial depolarization. The QRS complex shows ventricular depolarization. The T wave indicates ventricular repolarization. And the SD segment represents the time between ventricular depolarization and repolarization. Remember these components, they are the foundation for interpreting ECG changes in the myocardial infarction. The first stage of a myocardial infarction is the hyperacute stage, which occurs within minutes to hours after the artery is blocked. The hallmark feature here is hyperacute T waves. These are tall, broad, and sometimes asymmetric T waves. They occur because ischemia, or oxygen deprivation, causes localized changes in potassium channels, making the T waves more prominent. These changes are a critical early warning sign. Catching this stage early can significantly improve outcomes with immediate treatment. As the infarction progresses to the acute stage, the most well-known ECG change appears. The ST segment elevation. This elevation reflects injury to the full thickness of the myocardium, what we call a transmural infarction. The ST segment elevation varies depending on the location of the infarction. The SD elevation in lid D to TV6 is called anterior wall SD elevation myocardial infarction. The SD elevation in lid 2, lid 3, and lid of VF is called inferior wall SD elevation myocardial infarction. And the SD elevation in lid 1, lid of VL, lid V5, and lid V6 is called lateral wall SD elevation myocardial infarction. These patterns help pinpoint which artery is blocked guiding treatment decisions like thrombolysis or urgent angioplasty. After the acute stage, we enter the early subacute stage, which lasts about one to three days. At this point, you'll often see pathological Q waves emerge. These Q waves are deeper and wider than normal and indicate that irreversible myocardial damage has occurred. ST elevation may start to resolve during this stage, but new T-wave inversions can appear as the ischemic zone expands. In the late subacute stage, typically days to weeks after the infarction, the SD segments usually return to baseline, but the T-waves remain inverted. These deep symmetrical T-wave inversions indicate ongoing myocardial recovery and remodeling. This stage is especially important for monitoring the patient's recovery and preventing complications like ventricular aneurysms or heart failure. Finally, in the chronic stage weeks to months after the infarction, the ECG stabilizes. Pathological Q waves often persist as a permanent marker of the infarction. However, the T waves may normalize over time, especially if the heart has healed effectively. At this stage, the focus shifts to long-term management, including lifestyle changes, medications, and cardiac rehabilitation. Let's summarize the ECG changes during myocardial infarction. The normal ECG with baseline SD segments. The hyperacute stage with tall and broad T waves. The acute stage with SD segment elevation. Early subacute stage with pathological Q waves, resolving SD elevation and T wave inversions. Late subacute stage with T wave inversions dominate. And chronic stage with persistent Q waves and normalized T waves. Each stage offers critical clues that can save lives. Prompt diagnosis and intervention can make all the difference. Thanks for watching. 
If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and don't forget to subscribe for more insightful medical content. Have any questions or requests for future videos? Drop them in the comments below. Until next time, stay curious and keep learning.